who's the coach of the team? The producer picks the players, the producer picks the plays, and the producer sends his quarterback to go in and execute what he wants done. Um, for the most part, that's what a producer does. The director is the quarterback. The director is who's calling the plays. Every, every time that you go into play, the, the director is saying, I want the camera to be here. I want the actor to act this way. I want the lighting to look like this. Um, so that's kind of what the director does. The writer, um, the writer creates, this, I guess to use the football analogy, is who creates the plays in the first place. The writer is who comes up with the idea and executes it. And all three of those different roles, those are the three primary roles in everything in the movie business. It's a little different in TV. And I don't really know TV well enough to be able to really talk to you about TV, but I can talk to you about, about movies. Um, so those are the, the different jobs. Now you guys are, are growing up in an era where it's an amazing time to be a filmmaker. When I started out, the only way to make movies, there was only really two opportunities. You could um, make a movie raise some money, make a movie, and it could go to Sundance, and your movie could get bought at Sundance, and that's how you get big. Or you toil for years working on smaller movies and working your way up bigger, and that takes a long time. Um, right now, if you, guys, if you guys all got together, or three or four of you got together, and you made an amazing film, and you put that film on YouTube, and people started seeing that film, that someone would bring that film to my attention, or another producer, and you would get phone calls. And no one would say, you're 16 or 17 years old. If your film was amazing, and people couldn't believe how compelling it was, you could get work doing what you do. I mean, you can actually, there is no barrier to entry right now. All you need is a camera like this, and a green screen like this, and a computer, and you can make a movie. So, um, you know, that's, that's an amazing thing, and, and, and it's a big difference. Um, so I think that if you guys are interested, the, those of you who said that you're directors, I think it, it, it's very important to recognize the kind of movies that you want to make and what inspires you, and to focus very closely on that. If you like to make comedies, make as many small comedies as you can. And when you, don't put your first one on YouTube, but put your best one on YouTube. And it's amazing how many people actually see the work that you guys create. Um, for me, We've made um, a bunch of those films. Has anyone seen, has anyone, just by show of hands, anyone see Texas Chainsaw Massacre, or, or Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Okay, so let's talk about that movie a little bit, because that was uh, my first, I, I produced four movies before that. With that, actually, let me go back and tell you a little bit about my, um, my background and what happened to me. I, um, I always wanted to be a movie producer, and uh, the reason I wanted to be a movie producer was I never had the talent to write, and I certainly didn't have the patience to direct. And I knew that as a young man. That, so producing seemed like the, the, the next best thing. Um, I had the good fortune to work for a guy named Henry Winkler who played Fonzie on TV, who some of you may, may not know. And I worked for him for a long time. And he was a real inspirational person to me. And um, he was a, he, I met him after Happy Days. And he was a producer at that point. And, and being around someone so incredible and so generous had um, a real impact on me. And that was why I wanted to become so he, uh, he kind of gave me my start and, um, and helped me uh, develop that. Um, but when you graduate college, as I'm sure some of you will do, there's really no school to go to for producing. And uh, I ended up going to, into the William Morris Mailroom, which is a talent agency in Beverly Hills. And uh, when you become famous directors or writers or producers, you will be represented by either William Morris or CAA or one of the agencies. And I was in the mail room there delivering mail at 6 in the morning or at 11 at night or an agent needed me to get a script out to, um, I'm trying to think who you guys would know that I was, well, Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson needed a script one night and I had to get up out of bed at 10.30 and drive it up to his house and hand deliver it to him and that's kind of how you start. Um, as for me, that's how I started. And I worked my way up through William Morris for a couple of years. And I got hired, I got a job working for the guys who uh, made the movie Chicago. Did anyone here see that movie? And I worked for those guys for a couple of years and uh, they fired me. 
And uh, I was so humiliated that I actually not only left the entertainment business, I left Los Angeles for five years and moved to Las Vegas. I mean, it was such a humiliating thing to leave, to, uh, to be fired by those guys. And um, I started producing crappy television for pay-per-view television. Fight shows and all, just horrible television. Now, at the same time, my best friend in college, who I, I grew up with, wanted to become a director. And he was very focused from the age you guys are. I mean, I knew him, so you guys are 16, 17 years old, right? Is that 15, 16, 17? So I knew this guy from that age. And he was very focused on being a director. That's all he wanted to do. And not only be a director, but he wanted to be a director who made movies that you guys would, everyone in this room would go to. And he was very focused on that thing, being a commercial director. And we, went to the same college, went to school back east, a little school called Wesleyan University. And um, I was working at William Morris, and he was becoming director. And by the time I got out of William Morris, he was on his way. And um, you might know him, and his name is Michael Bay. Right, do you guys know Michael Bay? Yeah. Transformers and all those movies. <laughs> so Michael was starting out directing videos, and I was working with William Morris, and then I moved to Vegas, and Michael would come up to Vegas and visit me, and my wife, and my, I, at that point I had my first son, um, and Michael and I stayed very close. Um, and his career was going like this, and my career was going like this. I mean, and he, uh, after um, being in Vegas, he said to me, you have to come back to Los Angeles. You can't stay up here in Vegas making crappy pay-per-view television. This is not a career. And I said, well, what should I do? And he said, well, I don't know, but you got to get back, and you probably should start making movies. And I came back to Los Angeles. And it was very challenging for me in that I had, a, I had two kids at that point and no career. And, um, but I moved back, and I just decided by will that I was going to start making movies. And I made two horrible, horrible movies that I hope you never see. And I won't even tell you what they're called because they're so horrible. But the challenge then was make a movie for, I raised $100,000 from the parents in my son's nursery school class in Las Vegas. I lived in Vegas and I raised the money from them. And we made this atrocious film. But we sold it. And, we, and I got their money back and I made, I think, $7,000 on it. And um, I said, I can do this. And Michael said, you can do this. And at this point, Michael now, I'm trying to think where Michael was in his career, he probably was prepping Bad Boys. Did, it, did everyone here see Bad Boys? Oh, that was yeah. Michael's first movie. He was probably prepping Bad Boys at that time when I was making this horribly crappy little movie. And um, what I decided, because I had to support my family, was that I was going to start managing young filmmakers and help them get their movies made. Even though I didn't know how to make a film, I represented myself as someone who could help you get your film made. And um, luckily, I met, I mean, this is all fortuitous, but at the time, it, sound, it was horrible. And it was, it was very stressful. And I, got, I had two kids crying in the background. My wife's looking at me and saying, what are you going to do for a living? And I'm saying, well, I'm going to help people make their movies. And she's going to say, well, you don't know how to make a movie, so how are you going to help them make a movie? And I said, I'm just, it's going to work out. We're going to make this work. And I made a movie that you can't see, which actually isn't crappy. It was something called A Better Way to Die. And I made that movie in 1998. And Better Way to Die was a $2 million action movie. And it starred um, a bunch of people who I don't think you'll know. Has anyone in this room ever heard of Nat Natasha Henstrich? She's a beautiful blonde actress. Anybody know who she is? How about Andre Brower? He's a yeah. great man. Mm -hmm. He was in it. And this guy named Joey Pants and Lou Diamond Phillips. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this, is not, this is not the best cast, but we got that movie made. And off the heels of that, getting that movie made, I got um, another movie made. And that second movie that I got made had an even better cast with a little bit higher budget. That was a $4 million movie. Um, and that movie was called Emmett's Mark. And that movie's kind of good, not great. Um, stars Gabriel Byrne, Tim Roth, and a guy named Scott Wolf, who used to be big, but really isn't big. Um, and we made that movie. But Michael Bay, my closest friend, is saying, this is going great. Your career's, you know, you're making these movies. And at this point now, after I made those two movies, Michael is rapping Armageddon. Um, he is at the top of his game. He's in his 
early 30s. He's making, not that it's relevant, making a ton of money. Everybody wants to work with him. He just wrapped a movie with Bruce Willis. Uh, studios are saying, whatever you want to do, Michael, we're going to do. And he comes to me and says, would you ever want to start a production company? Now, Michael Bay asking me to start a production company is probably the craziest thing that happened in my life. I mean, it's literally like if you're playing football and then Tom Brady says, let me teach you how to throw a foot. I mean, it was the equivalent of that. But I was lucky that I went to college with the right guy at the right time. <coughs> And I said, well, uh, absolutely, I want to start a production company, what are we doing? And, and Michael, um, he, <clears throat> he's kind of absent, he's like the absent-minded professor. He says, okay, great, and then never brings it up to me for another year and a half. So I'm saying to him, I keep on saying, well, what are you going to do about this production company? He goes, well, I, I, I got to do this movie, I'm finishing my movie, I got, and Armageddon comes out, and it's a huge movie. And everyone wants, now a lot of people want to be in the Michael Bay business. And I'm looking at this and I'm seeing my opportunity. I'm concerned that someone is going to move in and take this opportunity away from me. And, and, and I'm still spending time with him all the time. He's just not engaging on that discussion. I don't know if you guys have ever had that situation where you want something from someone, but you can't ask them every time you see them, when are we doing this? Because it becomes annoying. So I resign myself to the fact that the company itself is never going to, either we're not going to. And um, I'm trying to make other films, and that's not going well. And at that point, then to try and make a living, I started, <coughs> excuse me, representing actors, which I knew nothing about, also. And uh, has anyone here seen a show called Girlfriends? Has anyone seen that show? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, the lead girl on Girlfriends. I mean, this is not a, but I put this girl Tracy Ross on that show, Girlfriends. I, I was her manager. And that was literally paying the bills in my house while I'm waiting for Michael Bay to start this production company and I'm trying to produce movies. And lo and behold, one day I get a phone call from a guy named Andrew Form. And Andrew says, uh, I was having dinner with Michael last night and he wants us to sit down and talk. And I said, about what? And who are you? And he says, about starting a production company. And I'm thinking, well, I don't know who this guy is. And I thought this was going to be just my thing with Bay. Who is the sand reform? But when I looked at my opportunities, that was an incredible opportunity. So I, uh, I went and sat down with Andrew. And Andrew was Jerry. Everyone here know who Jerry Bruckheimer is? I assume everyone knows who Jerry is. Andrew was Jerry Bruckheimer's assistant. <clears throat> and he met Michael when they made Bad Boys together. And um, he said to me, Michael mentioned that he's starting a production company with you, and he thinks that we should be partners. And if the two of us can be partners, Michael has said that we'll start this company. And I said to Andrew, I said, I don't care what you do. I don't care what it takes. We're starting this company. And literally that day, we shook hands. And that night, we went up to Michael's house. And we started the company. I mean, it was that. It was like I forgot about it, and then Andrew came, Andrew said, "Let's do it." So we start this company now. That's where it actually gets interesting. So you have a situation where Michael Bay, <coughs> who at this point had not done Transformers, but is someone to be reckoned with in the entertainment business, has made a lot of money for a lot of people, and that um, that is very relevant. And then you got his two buddies over here who really haven't done much of anything. And the question is, how do you start a company? I mean, it's simple. I mean, the company is really Michael Bay, right? I mean, how do you make yourself have an identity? And what we decided to do, and in retrospect, it was smart, um, but we didn't know it at the time, was we decided that what can we do differently than what everyone else is doing? How can we differentiate ourselves from every other production company? And um, it wasn't enough to be partnered with a director because Michael was not going to direct movies for our production company. So we sat there and we talked for a couple weeks. And the thing we decided that we were going to do <clears throat> was we were going to make movies cheaper than everyone else that looked better. That was it. Make movies that look great. And the way we came to that was that Michael Bay's movies are great looking. 